Here we go. Friday is finally here. Yes. And uh, here at the Morning Fix, we actually like to spice it up on Fridays. And we have something that's called Financial, Financial Fridays. Fridays. What are we talking about today, Bago? Well, today we have a special guest mm-hmm. uh, who is an IT risk advisory and an analytics manager at PKF, Mr. Satyajit. Tumela is with us. Okay, we'll be talking all things cyber security. So, you know, if you don't know anything about this, this is the place to start. We'll mm-hmm. be talking about the basics and uh, it's truly an educational segment going on here. 12 minutes past 8 here in Nairobi and you are on The Morning Fix and uh, this morning it is a Friday so of course it is Financial Friday. That is right and we've got a really special guest with us. It is Satyajit Turumel I hope I said that correctly. He is the risk advisory and analytics manager at PKF, and you're going to tell us all about cybersecurity. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you for having me on the show, guys. No, of course. I think we'll start with the basics. Yeah. Um, what are those mistakes that an average person is making on the daily that makes them susceptible to hacking or any attacks online? Uh, well, I think there are. About two mistakes that everyone makes okay and, just um, two yeah just t- two basic ones one is you know you don't really want to understand what your password looks like <laughs> <laughs> guilty and, and two is you know you click on everything and anything that comes and pops up on your screen or on your phone so right. those are the two basic mistakes so how do you differentiate between something that is a threat and you genuinely just want to click on this and uh, you know see what it's about well first is trust so mm-hmm. do you trust the person sending you this link okay Right, and then the second is try to understand if the moment you click that link, is the link changing on your browser? Hmm. Okay, so when you click it, a vis-a-vis when it loads into the browser, is it two right. different things? Right. 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 right, but you know, you spoke about passwords. Now, question is, how often should one be changing their passwords? I think um, every thirty days. Good frequency. What? Thirty days? I can't even remember my password. <laughs> Ten days back and thirty days. Every thirty days. <laughs> yes. What about if you use the automatically generated <laughs> passwords? You know, from Google Chrome <laughs> or from Apple also has the automatically generated passwords. Okay. Again, you see, when you have automatically generated passwords, can you remember them? Yeah, that's harder to remember. Actually. No, I, you can't remember them at all because it, it fills in automatically. Yeah. So is that safe? It's not safe. Not when safe at all. Fills automatically. It's, it's not, not safe. safe. Oh. And how about saving these passwords that you create? or that are created on notes or google docs well if, if you get hit then whoever is your hacker knows all your passwords. Everything. so it needs to stay all in the brain it needs to be something that you can remember like a song ah okay bug of you and i have loads of options to choose from for passwords i think after this satya will also have those many options yes so there we go we've got two points make sure the links you're pressing are trustworthy make sure they don't change in your browser and change your passwords every 30 days every 30 days well i've got some thinking to do if well, you don't have to be solo this Valentine's Day because we have something for you. Keep it right here to Radio 44. But for now, we're talking about the financial... Fridays. Mm-hmm. There we go. And we decided to talk about cyber security in particular because everything is online nowadays. Um, you can even get groceries online, your social media is online. And for a lot of people right now, because of COVID-19, it is work from home True. so tell us how can they stay safe and is it safe to be working from home okay well those are two different questions <laughs> <to start with. laughs> one is it safe depends upon the internet connection at home and the mm-hmm. number of people who are connected to that internet connection mm-hmm. right and um, the second is is it safe it depends upon what are you accessing are you accessing um, files of your office mm-hmm. from home and if you are then do you have a virtual private network that you're connecting to So would you recommend that um, almost everyone should have a VPN or is it only an extreme? Well, um, ideally, yes, everyone should have access to the companies for the company. Okay, wow. But if you're on social media and you're at home, I don't think a VPN would be necessary. Mm -hmm. Unless social media is blocked in your country. And unless you want to watch the other stream of (laughs) things. (laughs) Uganda, basically. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So that VPN is critical. So, you know, if you're listening and you've been working from home or you're a business owner, maybe it is time to um, see if that's possible to implement uh, to just make sure that your business is safe because just one compromise can really tear down um, a business. 
Exactly, yeah. exactly, Radhika. I think uh, the other thing is that you know most businesses are very protective about the data that they hold. Mm-hmm. So data privacy is one of the key concerns for yeah. any business. So your business is as good as your data. Correct. So if you can't protect the one key asset that you have, then how are you going to go about running a business? True. I think um, we can. In the past, we've seen businesses will employ security guards, and this is just another aspect of it. As time has developed, um, it's another security measure that everyone needs to start taking. A virtual security guard. Yes, rather. exactly. <laughs> well, I've got a message from a number ending with nine double eight, and they say, you know, we generally, especially with Indians, we trust a lot. <laughs> What? Yeah. Is this going? <laughs> no, it, it's kind of true. We do tend to trust each other more than something. Oh, each yeah, other. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah, more than something that is on. Mm-hmm. So that's what that's one. There is also another question. What are the basic security precautions or steps a person should take or keep? So the, there are two questions basically. What are your thoughts on trust as security control, and what are the basic security precautions? I think uh, when you when it comes to trust and looking at two individuals, uh, that's pretty much a cultural thing. So uh, when you're looking at culture, culture is embedded within us. So the only way to probably look at that as a control is you can trust the person, but at the same time not trust the person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You need to be skeptical about the person's behavior. Try to monitor the person's behavior when he's not around. Right. You know, try to understand what is what is his motive. What does he want to do? Is he genuinely trying to help you, yeah. or is he not? Why is he being so you? sweet? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So try to understand <laughs> that angle. <laughs> Stop becoming detectives. <laughs> I, I didn't realize this was in cyber security. <laughs> Some bit of Sherlock Holmes going on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, cyber security is basically about people. Ah, uh, yes, It's of course. It's not about the systems that you use. So mm-hmm. I think that's the key element that people usually forget. That you know, it, it starts with people. Exactly. Right. So well, we can move on to the second question where you said the basics, right? So yeah. one is, um, you know, always whenever you're at home or you're at work, make sure you lock your PC. Lock right? your yes. PC. Lock okay. your PC. Because what what we've seen is in most situations you just leave the PC open and you're probably a receptionist, mm-hmm. and someone can just come in and look at all the information that's yeah. there. Or take right? it out. Yeah. Or take it out. Right. Second, make sure your PC is up to date at all times. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I will sit out of this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and um, the third and the most critical is the browser that you use is the gateway to the internet. Mm-hmm. So make sure that whenever you're on your browser, make sure that you're not being tracked. Yeah, because every website has so many trackers. So how do you make sure you're not being tracked by not being an expert? You know, uh, like how does the lay person make sure they're not uh, being tracked? Well, you can, for instance, you can use search engines like DuckDuckGo. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone likes using uh, either Bing or Google. Yes. Yeah. Or Yahoo, for instance. But um, just try looking at DuckDuckGo. So, is this a search engine or a browser? It's a search engine okay. and a browser, just like oh, the way Google has Chrome. Oh, I see. Okay, I've heard of Jujol. Have you heard of Jujol? Jujol, yes. Yeah. But you see, DuckDuckGo, well, at least from our perspective, is that. It doesn't track a lot of your activity and keeps a lot of things safe. Mm-hmm. So that's safer. That's safer because that is one gateway to accessing the internet. Okay. So Signal, WhatsApp, DuckDuckGo, Google. Ah, uh, okay. Th- <laughs> I love that bugger. You are translate. You're the translator. Forty-three <laughs> minutes past eight, and you're listening to the Morning Fix. We are talking about Financial Fridays, and Satya is with me, who is an analytics manager from PKF. A brilliant mind because we've been talking about so much in between the songs. But I want to ask you one more question. You know the Social Network, the Netflix movie that was there. Yeah. They asked. They basically mentioned whatever we do or ask or anything that's going on within our internet or social media is all recorded and used against us. In fact, there was also a YouTuber who actually went on and just was talking to his phone. He didn't search or anything. Was just talking to the phone, and then. The moment he went on to his social media, all the pop-up ads and everything that was coming up was the thing that he was talking about. How true is this? Are we being tracked 24/7? I think um, before you get to the tracking part, remember you guys allowed access to <laughs> the app. <laughs> so we let them so in. You, you've agreed to the terms and conditions mm-hmm. of how the app is supposed to function without reading. Yeah. Without reading. Them, so. <laughs> so, but are they listening to us? That's that's I think the key question. The key word search is basically what this analytics engine picks up. It's mm-hmm. an artificial intelligence. What it does is, let's say, if you say shoes, so it's not listening to what you're saying. It's listening to keywords and mm-hmm. says, okay, fine. If this person's looking for shoes, new or old, can I give him shoes? Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Remember, w- these uh, engines are built in such a way that. If you're not paying for them, then you are the product. 
Remember, there's yes. someone else's fake I clothes. think your data is the product for um, all these big tech companies. To sell now. Um, and then we've seen that with WhatsApp as well. And the thing is, do people really care? Because, you know, there was a whole debacle about WhatsApp. We even talked about yes. it here on the show. Yes. Everyone's still on WhatsApp. <laughs> so, are, well, you, are you on WhatsApp? I'm on WhatsApp. Okay. I, I didn't jump ship. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still pretty much on WhatsApp. I don't really want to go to Signal. Okay. Uh, the reason is that WhatsApp is end-to-end encrypted. So, that means that not unless specifically there's a keyword that would require to be searched whatsapp does not access any of your messages okay so there you go the whatsapp myth has been busted exactly what about apps like tiktok because we saw the indian government ban it although that might have been for political reasons but um the reason they gave and also the us was talking about china is using our data against us are they going yeah they're going to nuke us and all of this um haphazard it's, it's propaganda. interesting it's interesting how uh, a tech company gets in the middle of a political <laughs> yes, issue and it's, yeah. and it's tiktok <laughs> <laughs> exactly so well as much as tiktok is out there there's a lot of information that tiktok's gather about you mm-hmm. right so it, it talks about you know what is your preference what do you want to see yeah yes. so based on whatever um clicks that you have or the number of clicks that you have on a particular thing or how your eyeball responses are your eyeballs yeah so the eyeball camera tracking. is on eyeball tracking is a real data what no thing, so. wait 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 let's, <laughs> let's let's go back here when i'm watching my tiktoks in bed with the drool on my face <laughs> looking like a mess the camera is looking at me well it's it's something that's built in mm-hmm. but the camera is not really on where they wouldn't see your face uh-huh. but they monitor your eyeball tracking so is to it see if it's interesting if yeah. i'm locked in exactly so like let's say if you're scrolling your eyeball is pretty much moving up and down yes. yeah but when you're stationary your eyeball is focused on one particular item so, so it picks that you like exactly a video like this so it shows you more like that similar to that just something like what even youtube does so yeah i mean wow, <laughs> wow. Um, bhagav do you yeah. feel suddenly uncomfortable yes i feel risky <laughs> <laughs> i feel i'm at risk but do you feel the risks are going to increase with all these technological advancements that we're yes the risks will increase which is why you have um, you know a, a lot of um, regulations coming in for instance you've got the eu uh, gdpr the EU, yes right. yeah. yeah the gdpr talks about you know how exactly you're supposed to uh, you know present your data who's supposed to handle your data and how much is that data supposed to be collected for mm-hmm. and for what purposes yeah so not unless they collect that uh, consent from you explicitly mm-hmm. they're not allowed to use it so what about in Kenya do we have a similar protection yes there's okay. the, the Kenya data protection act mm-hmm. that rolled out in November 2019 okay so yeah it's very much borrowed from the EU GDPR and it does talk about you know what you should do and uh, what you should not from a data collection perspective mm-hmm. um so that pretty much helps in um, you know going about this digital platform. So I think I just have one last question and this is a very personal question. Do you <laughs> think being on social media is a, is like a critically fatal mistake to cybersecurity? I'll answer it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think so. You see, it's not uh, fatal. It's not fatal. Mm-hmm. It's not, not going to kill you. Yeah. Yes. But if your data goes out uh, without your permission uh-huh. and there's some embarrassing things then maybe. I mean, it's similar <laughs> to what happened to all the Hollywood celebrities. celebrities yes. I can't remember what it was called, but um, Um, yeah, there was a term they gave. Yeah, there was a term, but it, it was a very explicit photos yes. were leaked. Um, it was like something about the cloud gate or something like that. The cloud, the iPhone cloud. Yeah, yeah. Well, someone hacked in. Well, you see, Apple's uh, security is top notch. So mm-hmm. you know, even if you want to get in, not unless you have some level of uh, passwords. Okay. Or you have done social engineering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the best way to get to your social media account is to befriend you. Okay. gather all information about you and that's how I'll, I'll create a replica of you wow well we don't need any more radicals <laughs> in this room but that's been really interesting especially with the social media i think a lot of people can relate to that yeah, yeah. and you know you just have to be careful what you put out there i think i don't know if you agree with me you need to realize that what you save on your phone what you do on your phone might not always be just between you and your phone exactly. so you need to be careful what you put on it i think that's a good Okay. Well exactly. done. Exactly. You've got any jobs lined up? <laughs> <laughs> It's been an awesome time here on Financial Fridays on The Morning Fix. We've been talking about cybersecurity and I've learned that my phone is not my friend. <laughs> I'd like to say a huge huge thank you to Satyajit. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. If you missed the discussion, he is a risk advisory and analytics manager at PKF and uh, you've really taught us so much. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. I show. hope you had a good time. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much.